Hello, this is Cem Tezcan and this is my pixel toaster design which I 3D printed in home. So I use the Raspberry Pi in it. It runs BMC64 emulator and it has several electronic modules all over connected to the Raspberry Pi. Like a DPI screen, it's 5 inch, and gamepad interface, a power bank unit, you can see the uh, battery capacity by this window and USB expansion and also some dip switches and a speaker volume controller here. Also this wheel controls the screen brightness and it is uh, the, uh, thanks to the uh, battery bank, bank you can charge, recharge anything by this USB port. So these dip switches uh, turns on and off the screen, uh, the speaker and these two expansion uh, ports like the USB since uh, these are distributed by a, U a USB hub so uh, these dip switches turns off this, that USB hub to distribute this uh, additional USB ports. Uh, to save battery actually uh, because if I'm not connecting anything through here I disable the USB hub to lower the power consumption so let me turn it on and it boots up to a Commodore 64 like this so the screen brightness works like that let me dim it a little let me see on the camera as well. It's pretty readable like that. All right. So the secondary module uh, is this. I made it uh, an a keyboard expansion like this. It is connected with a USB port as well, and through these hooks with that holes. So let me connect it. I uh, I insert it like that and push it a little bit to the front to make the shrink fit like that. And next I connect the USB input. So you see that it has a lighting like that. Uh, it's uh, pretty helpful on the dark areas or the dimmed ambient light so it won't work right now because emulator controls the uh, USB um, keyboard on the boot so I turn it off and on to make it recognized so you can see that it recognized the keyboard like this since it's it's tactile switches, it uses tactile switches, it's hard to, a little hard to easily type anything, but it's better than nothing, if you ask me. So the layout and the key combination is totally same with the Commodore 64. On the left arrow is placed here because of the um, layout limitations of the PCB. I didn't design it, a friend of mine did and you can see uh, the link to order this kind of uh, keyboard uh, through PCBA. And let's load a game by shift and run stop to run the load command. I'm switching to the emulator menu and from there I attach a tape image which will be spellbound DZ alright and from there I'm navigating to the dataset controller interface with I, which I assigned to that button and from there I can play press play on the tape like that and this way it loads the game as usual and if I disable the scan lines on the screen to, 
uh, by disabling the CRT, CRT shader it gives me much more uh, CPU power after disabling it so I assigned the warp which means the speeding up the emulation to this button and if I press it it will be much faster than the normal loading time if the CRT shader is enabled uh, the warp speed is more like Two, uh, two times or three times faster but this way it is more like seven or eight times faster than the normal loading time you can see if I enable the tape counter here you can see that it passes about five ticks a second so it loaded the game and I'm disabling the warp speed and I can adjust the volume by here this game is not playable with a joystick so it can be only playable with a keyboard so Z and X keys and the space to jump and return is used for activating something or grabbing the objects so this can be playable with that keyboard like that so there are also this kind of um, virtual keyboard on the emulator but it will be hard to just play the game with a virtual keyboard like this assignment to the specific keys may be possible and it can be playable like that as well so this is pretty much with that new add-on I made it to this portable device and I wanted to keep the general um, design style with that one so it's I suppose I made the continuum on the design uh, pretty well it doesn't look so different or uh, looks like uh, something from a different device so I'm pretty happy with the result so thanks for watching oh and uh, one final thing about it can be usable with my FirePad 64 design uh, it is a rate adjustable auto fire and a keyboard type of replacement of a standard joystick so I use this kind of flat cables to connect this to the real C64 and let me see right the real 64 and this device as well connected by here you can see that it has also LED lighting I suppose I can't get out myself from this kind of lighting so let's move it aside and load a game that can playable with a joystick I see a snapshot with named as Last Ninja yes so it can be playable like that you need to avoid this sword while by, uh, by jumping but it's a bit of hard to adjust it like that I don't know if this area is passed like that maybe I triggered a bug I don't know but I always pass that area like this so this light is also used for uh, showing the um, auto fire rate I can increase and decrease it by the slider or just 
use the sticky button to make it always available, uh, always on, like uh, while playing a shoot em up. All right. I love this game and can't uh, get myself out without playing it when I saw it. So I will pass this level anyway. By painting himself, he can go through this painted floor, floor and the next game is loading. I can also speed this up. I'm not sure it's loading the correct tape, I suppose. Anyway, let's play or load different game. I named these snapshots, but I'm not sure if I rename them correctly. So this is the exile which is my favorite game uh, lately and also I was playing it uh, in my childhood. The particle effects of this um, jetpack of this astronaut is amazing. You see that on the left uh, on the left side, leftmost side of this map, uh, there is a force, wind force, coming through left side. And you can see that the astronaut cannot go further to that area, and also the particles are showing that there is a wind resistance uh, there. So I I love the general. Um, I love the general uh, physics of this game. You see that there's amazing um, firecracker type of beams. I can fire. So the particles are really amazing on this game. Also, it has a huge area of uh, map. And also it's very hard game, you need to follow some walkthrough uh, on many cases because it's also possible on many areas to uh, get stuck uh, because of the wrong decisions. It's really hard game and I'm not sure it can be completable. But uh, since I have some solutions with pages on the internet, some people uh, possibly just completed the game, but there is no video, I suppose. But one of my friends just told me about um, a cheat on the starting of the game. There's an astronaut is stealing the um, engine, some engine parts uh, from our spaceship and just teleport himself. At this, uh, while this happening, if you just teleport yourself, you can uh, keep the part on the uh, on the spaceship. So you can see the final ending of the game right there by holding uh, this part, getting this part on the starting of the game. It's very <laughs> ridiculous, but amazing. So. Let me see if I can restart the game. I'm not sure it can be possible. Yeah, we need to load the game again since there is no restart the game option. Maybe shift keys with the F keys. No. This triggers the emulator. Man. I show you someday with that trick that my friend told me about it. So 
this is the fire pad which is an um, traditional joystick actually is used with my pixel toaster so it's also fun and I painted this with the general Commodore beige color uh, to make the uh, design continue once again and also it looks nice with this general concept again see you later